Hi everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And today we are reviewing the Basilica. Basilica by Portal Games. Yes, and mm -hmm. this is actually a second printing. It's kind of an updated version, yeah. but we have not played the first one. No, we haven't. So this is strictly taking a look at this one. Yeah, correct. It is building a cathedral. Mm -hmm. Two builders. Two builders. So it's a two player game. Yep. Two builders. Two player game. That makes sense. Two right. builders. Yeah, <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. works. So we're going to talk about mm -hmm. how it works uh -huh. first, and then we'll talk about what we thought about it. So I here's like how it, it plays. Nice. Okay, so we are set up for a two-player game of Basilica. Basilica is an only two-player game, and I'm going to go over pretty much how the game is played. I'm not going to go too much into detail about the rules, but this is pretty much just the way the game is played. So you've got a stack of tiles right here. The tiles are two-sided, one side showing the order side, the other side showing the vault side. You're going to have the stack with the order side face up, and you're going to arrange them like this on this board. Over here, you've got the scoring track. Next to the scoring track, each player gets a scoring marker, the red and the white, and you also get this queen. The queen, I do like the quality of these, by the way. So this queen right here is going to move along this track, and when she gets here, to 10, you're going to score. You're going to score at 20, and you're going to score at 30. This is an area control style game. Then every player is going to get five builders, a coin, and some promotions. So here's the way the game is played. It's very simple. These are the instructions right here. Very short. And pretty much on your turn, you can do three actions. They can be any of these three right here. Place vault, place builder, execute order. The one caveat is place builder can only be done after you place a vault because the builder goes onto that vault. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and go through it. I'm going to go through a sample turn for red and white. So say the red person wants to go ahead and take out a vault tile and place it here. Initially, you have to place a vault tile in the starting row. After that, you can either go the starting row or you can go adjacent to one of these tiles. So red slid this down. This one flips over. You refill. And now a second action. Second action, I'm going to go ahead and place a builder on there. All right, and then for my third action, I'm going to slide this one out and go here. Then I'm going to refill. Now, because I put this one here, this has a crown. A crown means the queen now starts to move. For every crown, she's going to move one forward and get closer to scoring. So this is a two section right here, and I now have control of it. The next player is going to go. White is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take a blue place a blue right here. Again, it is adjacent, so I can do that. Then I'm going to go red here. And then I'm going to, for my third action, go right here. So I've placed a builder. So right now it is a tie. No one has control of this. Go back to red player. Red player, we're going to go ahead and go here, blue. Flip, drop, and there is a crown, so it's going to advance one more. And then I'm going to go ahead and place a builder, so I have this. Now, you notice right here, this tile is a wild tile. This will, if it stands somewhere, it will be red and green. So it can be two colors at once. So blue has gone twice. Now, what we've done so far is I've shown you place vault and place builder. There's also execute order. Execute order is to use one of these up here with their order side. For example, if I wanted to execute this order, this would pr be promoting one of my builders. So if I am, say, white does this. We'll say red does this. Red is going to promote a builder. So what promotion? I can use any of these right here. There's strongman, there's times two. So for example, I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it under this guy. So now these will score twice as many when it scores. Now, if red did that, then white has a chance to do it. Notice the coin here. I can pay a coin and promote one of my builders as well. And the coin just transfers to the other player. And for this one, I can prom promote one of my builders. It can't be the same promotion, but what I'll do 
is I will go ahead and give mine a right here, Master Mason. So now this guy is worth two. So he will have control of this section right here. So this would count as one, two to one. So I would get that. So play is going to continue in that manner. There are all these different kinds of this right here is scaffolding. You could place these pieces right here to break up someone's area. And this right here is you can place the builder and they have different orders all throughout here too. These right here are stained glass. Those add points to a certain area. So we're going to go ahead through and I'm going to show you how scoring works. We're going to place some more. Like I said, it is a five tile wide cathedral here. All right. So here we go. All right. So now let's say we have got this going on right here. So here's the way this scoring is going to work. Say the queen is already to here. We're going to go ahead and score. So this red section right here is four, counting the wild. So one, two, three, four. It would normally be tied, but this guy's worth two. So now white gets a majority. One, two, three, four. So boom. And since I've got presence right here, this builder is going to score one. All right. Let's check green. Green, two. There's only one person there. Very easy. So one, two. All right. Blue, one, two, three. Keep in mind this times two. What's nice about this times two will work no matter who. Like, for example, if I had two whites on here, even though it's a times two, then the white would get twice as many. But right here, the way it is, one, two, three times two, that is six. So it takes me up to nine. Then here we have yellow, one, two, three two white. So one, two, three. Now you've scored that. Then at the end of scoring, what's going to happen is these are considered finished. So the first two rows, all the builders go back to each player promotions as well. And then these tiles are placed back into discard. It's slid up kept in the same order, and then you keep going until 20 and 30. And after you score 30, that's the game. And it can also end if you go through this stack twice. You go through the stack once, that's fine. You reshuffle, do it again, but you go through it twice, you score, and that is the end of the game. But that is pretty much, in a nutshell, how you play Basilica. Let's send it back and see what we thought about it. Okay, so that is how Basilica plays. Yeah. So, okay, overall, first of all, component-wise. Oh, yeah. Great components. Components are great. Yeah, they look great. I like the little pieces. I like the tiles. They all just work. They all felt good. You didn't feel like you were about to break anything. So it was really good. That is one thing I was mm -hmm. impressed with the builders. They just look, they look very nice. They and, do. And almost elegant. They, they do. Like, they do have that very, um, very sleek, very elegant look about them. Yeah. yeah. I really, I did. It looked beautiful. From yeah. the queen to the builder, to the coins, mm -hmm. all that. And, and the, the tiles themselves. Oh, yeah. They're, they're great quality. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Art they did a great job. Great. Yep. Everything's mm -hmm. great on that. Now the tiles, you're gonna run into what you run into with anything with tiles. It's difficult to shuffle them. Yes, that was a nightmare. Yeah, because shuffling, you can't shuffle like you do with cards. You no. kind of have to pick them up and move them around. Yeah, and do that little of, game of like, what is it, the pee in the shell game that people play? I don't know what it really, is. Really, the whole thing yeah. is, it's like when you drop, I gotta tell you, so um, it's, <laughs> It's funny, I saw a magician working and he's like, hey, these cards are shuffled. And then he drops them and they're everywhere. And then he picks them up and you can tell he's freaking out because I'm like, yeah, now they're really shuffled. Yeah. So really, if you want to shuffle it, drop them is the best way. I've seen people do that with tiles. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you have to do that. I feel like that was the only really way to do it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you have that whole like moving around. But yeah, anyway, yeah. They're, they're tiles, so they're good and they're yeah. good quality, so they're not going to bend and all no, that. No, that's what I like. I like this. Solid tiles. You can plunk them down and... Build your cathedral. Yeah. So, so okay. So, <laughs> component-wise, they're great. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about gameplay. Yes. Let's talk about that. Gameplay, it's funny how as you play the game, we played it several times, uh -huh. and it our review, our view of it kind of changed a little bit. I was going to say, now, if, if I was going to review this after the first, even second round, it'd be very different than after I played the third round. Now, the big thing yeah. is, I'll go into, there's no player aid. No. And that's, it's it's a simple game, mm -hmm. but it's also simple to throw a player aid in there. Yeah, and I feel like those little um, tiles that have all the symbols about whether you can move your build or what, I kept having to go to the rule book every five seconds because I'm like, hang on, what does that mean? Does this mean the same as this one? I kept having to check. 
just it's so much easier if there was a player aid. That was my m number one thing I wrote down about this game. Needs a player aid. And there aren't <laughs> that many symbols. I mean, there's probably no. eight or nine, but it is one of those things that if you haven't played for a while, you're yes. picking it up. You have to go back because a lot of the a lot of the symbols are are similar. Yes. So you will need to check. You're like, is this? Do I move a builder? Do I replace a tile? Things yeah. like that. So now, one thing I did like about it is I like the coin mechanic. Yes, I did too. I like that close economy kind of thing too. One thing I was going to say too about the symbols is one of them, they were just kind of similar. You'll, I would think something was moving my builder, but actually it wasn't. It just, that was why that player aid was kind of needed. Yeah, and it's also yeah. one of those things, it's, it's a two player game, so it's competitive obviously. Mm. But then if you kind of understand something that someone else doesn't, like at one time I saw this whole area being doubled, and then I saw I had an altar and a, a and scaffolding. A, no, sta stained glass there. Stained glass. So there I knew go, I was yes. getting a lot of points, and she mm -hmm. wasn't concerned. I'm like, does she not see this? Yes. Second round she saw. It, <laughs> too yeah. far ahead. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think a player aid would help negate some of that. Mm -hmm. I and do agree with so, that, yes. Or even something on the back of the actual manual would yeah. be good. A quick glance kind right. of thing. Yeah, sorry, the coins. You're saying the closed economy. Closed economy. So mm -hmm. pretty much when you take the second action, you can give the coin to someone else and take the second action on their card, which is great because if that person never spends their coins, which she doesn't, then all of a sudden she, you would never be able to do that again. That was a point where I had the two coins and I was like, I'm not going to spend my coins because that way then you couldn't do anything on your turn. This game does have that competitive edge to it. I didn't realize how, it's very cutthroat. I didn't quite realize that, but it is very, like, so cutthroat. yes, like, you know, you throw down the scaffold, you're doing so good and then you're, the player next to you throws down scaffolding and then all that area you had there, gone, you know? It is. Yes. It is. I don't mind cutthroat. No. This is cutthroat, cutthroat, cutthroat. So much to where yeah. I'm like, man, I hate doing this because I'm <laughs> such a jerk. I know. And it's just, I mean, this makes Munchkin look like a group hug. Yes. It's like, it's, I mean, you will, <laughs> somebody's working so far on the heart of this area and you yeah. throw it on a scaffolding and it's like, oh man, they're going to hate me after yeah. this. Yeah. And if you're married to the person, it's even worse. <laughs> yes. But. <laughs> It's, so if you do like cutthroat yeah. and you have to have know the people you're playing against, they yeah. have to be okay with it. Yeah. And um, oh, absolutely. This is not the type of game to play with someone who's going to cry when you affect their little area they've been building because it is very cutthroat. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's and but that that's fine. It's fine. It's, it's neither, good. He, neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, a couple of negatives: you run out of workers pretty quickly yes. if you don't place people on the bottom two rows. You yes. don't get them back. No. And you only get them back through those moves. But the biggest problem for me, and I mm -hmm. think for you uh -huh. too, on this game is it seems a little bit samey and a little bit long. I was going to say, that's why I feel like my review after the first round and after the second round would be very different than after playing it multiple times with the full three rounds. That third round, I was kind of like, let's just get this over with. And to the point where we were just kind of getting the tiles out there so we could get all the points, score all the points to end it. Just because we wanted it to be over. Yeah. I, I felt like, and the third round did go by pretty quick because we were doing that, but it just felt long. It is. It's kind of yeah. like when someone comes over and you have a great time watching a movie and you are enjoying it, mm -hmm. but then a week later they're still there <laughs> eating your food, sitting on your couch, watching your TV, and their name <laughs> yeah. is Luke. There you go. You know yeah. who you are, Luke. You I'm just do. kidding. <laughs> no, but it, 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 it's way overstated. Yes. Welcome. Yeah. That's the thing. And I, I think it's not a long game. But it's a very thinky game, so it uh -huh. can be long. But the first couple of rounds, we did enjoy. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yes. I don't know how often it'll hit the table. But yeah, I that was my question too. I don't know if this is the game I would actively bring out to the table, but if I was at a con or something and I see people playing this or someone wants to play it or have it set up, I would totally go join it. Joining right. with that. That would be my thing. It's a very mm -hmm. nice, puzzly, abstract game that Correct. probably will get a little bit long in the third round, but if you kind of speed through that, it should be yeah. good. So, mm -hmm. and again, it looks good on the table, and it's, it's just, it's a fun little game. Yeah. So, um, overall, I would give this a, what, what would you give it? I'd give it a six. Six? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd go 6.5. Okay. <laughs> just because, um, <laughs> just, just to be different. Just because I really, I did enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how often we would play it, mm -hmm. but it's, I enjoyed our couple plays of it, and yeah, it I would was really good. be happy to play it again. Oh, absolutely. I would definitely play this game. Yeah, yeah. it's a great game. Mm -hmm. So that is Basilica by Portal Games. Oh, All right. Hey, thank you guys for joining us for another Dice Tower review. Bye. Right. Bye, guys.